Welcome to the hand tools and cardboard joints addendum video. I'm going to assume that everyone watching this video is a complete newbie. So don't take it personally if you have a lot of experience, but no table saw. If you are here just to take a look at the cardboard joints, they're pretty simple, but definitely worth checking out. Jump ahead to chapter two. So I will proceed as if everyone watching this has never done anything like this at all and has barely spent even a few minutes in a hardware store. We are going to be walking together through Home Depot, buying all the materials. I'm going to be showing you how to select wood, then we will be in the shop making the frames. After that, working on the braces out of steel track with snips. And finally, we'll be installing together. Everything in this tutorial will be made with a small collection of hand tools. Part one, Home Depot. I selected Home Depot because I am familiar with it and it's very similar to Lowe's. Both of them are national stores making this relevant for the most possible people. I am not saying don't go to a local hardware store by any means. Do. In fact, the larger chains are seasonal, so the shrink wrap you need may not be there during the summer. Smaller stores will have shrink wrap for windows year round. Home Depot. In the tools section, you will find the hand tools and safety equipment that you need. This is the hammer. I'm basically just pointing out all the cheaper stuff. This is the cutting box and the saw. You need this thin type of saw. I do suggest the cutting box. It will help keep your cuts square, which is important. Go ahead and buy the cheapest snips, but you will have a much better day if you get the best ones there. You really need gloves. If you plan to cut metal studs, you will get cut. Feel free to buy the multi-pack of goggles. These guys go missing all the time. If you wear prescription glasses, you can get the big ones that go over your actual viewing glasses. This is the least expensive stapler, and those are the staples for it. All right, we're moving into the painting department. Here is the clear packing tape. Now, clear packing tape is hard to remove. The adhesive stays stuck to surfaces. That's why I strongly suggest using blue tape wherever possible. It doesn't leave any adhesive behind, a small part of why 3M is worth billions. Both are handy. You definitely need both. And the glue. Also in the painting department, your chip brush. Grab two or three. Then you'll find these blades in the painting department as well. They are snap blades, so you can just snap them to sharpen them. This is usually where nitrile and latex gloves are, but good luck finding gloves. We actually don't use gloves during the installation. We wear a mask, goggles, and wash our hands when we're done. On to the window department. If you need plexiglass because you've decided to do a door, now we're in the hardware section. The shrink wrap is a seasonal product at Home Depot, so you are more likely to find this at your normal mom and pop hardware store during the summer. In that same section, you are going to find all of your flat brackets and L brackets. Yeah, just buy a little bit of everything from here. Very handy, and you can return stuff that you don't use. Here are some simple hinges. Just pick the cheapest knob, the one that I found is over here, and it was $1.68. Now we are in the fastener aisle of the hardware section. Those are the self-tappers that I suggest for making the steel track braces, but you also need these longer ones. These are the bolts for the knob. If you are not able to cut the bolt, then you will need these washers, number eights. Also in this section, you will find those little brass hooks. Here you go. And you are going to find these number eight half inch pan head screws. And you are also going to find the smaller self tappers or self drilling screws eight by half inch. They're handy to have for installations. Okay, in the lumber section now. This is the quality lumber area. It's not the trim and it's not the two by four area. I suggest you buy this whole pack. Make sure it's more than you need and I'll show you why right now. If you're buying just a few pieces, you really have to select them. So this would be considered a pretty good piece. Just a little curve on the side. In the good pile. 
this is not quite as good. See that curve right there at the end of it? And you will probably end up cutting it off the maybe pile. And this piece is pretty bad. We can't use it. That goes into the bad section over there. Okay, and let's see what this guy looks like. Yes, this is good. So the first one and this one. Good enough for government, as they say. All right, now we're looking at the steel studs. So there are differences between steel studs and runners or tracks. Studs have a dotted pattern on their sides and prominently curved edges. We don't want studs for the braces, we want runners. You can use studs to extend your braces. These are what you need. Tracks, or what I'm used to calling runners. Okay, last thing on the list, something to dust the finished panels with. I couldn't find my funky little duster, but select something that looks handy. And we are off to the shop. Part two, frames with cardboard joints. We're going to make the frame. This is a simpler frame than the primary tutorial. This is just a blank panel. If you need to put a doorway or opening in your frame, just add that step in here using the cardboard joint technique I'm showing you now. This is the off-the-shelf pre-milled wood that was bought from Home Depot. You can see these are pretty nice straight pieces. And this is the wood that I've been cutting out of my 2x4s. Pretty much identical except that these have a nicer milled round edge, which is probably a better look. I'm making a 59 inch wide and 36 inch tall panel. So I'm measuring now 59 inches. When we are finished with this, it will need to dry. So for example, don't assemble this outside if you are expecting rain. It will not be strong until it is dry. I need to hold this piece down with my left hand while cutting with my right. Pretty fast and pretty simple. For this panel, we need two 59 inch pieces and two 33 inch pieces. Before cutting the cardboard, I'm marking it here with arrows, in line with the corrugation. When using the cardboard, these arrows need to run vertically. Cardboard can bend easily in one direction. I suggested this blade because you can easily sharpen it by just snapping off the blunt edge. This tutorial assumes that you do not have a workbench, so don't be afraid to cut on cement or other hard surfaces that would normally dull a blade. Just snap it off and then you have a nice, fresh, sharp edge. I put the arrow marker on there just to keep track while I'm working. With this technique, you need a lot of glue. You need to get the glue between the joints, and you need a lot of glue on the cardboard itself. What is giving this cardboard strength is that it's glued on both sides of the corrugation. I forgot to put the arrow on this version, so I'm just showing you how the arrow should look. So let's pretend it's got the arrow pointing up along the corrugation's length over the joint. I put a few staples at the base, and now I'm going to square that side piece. Squared up, I lock it in with the stapler. As far as staples go, the more the merrier. With these small staples, you really can't overdo it. So yeah, just go for it. If you happen to have a crappy stapler or for some reason they're not going in all the way, you can just take a hammer and knock them down.
Once you've gotten all the joints set up, you need to apply glue to this top surface of the cardboard. Again, this is what gives this design so much strength. If it was just glued on the one side, I'm not sure this would work. This really does make a big difference, so use a bunch of glue and spread it all around. Get it on the staples and sides. I'm going to staple down that sharp edge that is sticking up. You can basically just never use enough glue. Just tons of glue, the more the merrier, no biggie. Okay, and then I put a piece of paper over it. This way I can flip it over and not worry about it sticking to my table or worry about little pieces of whatever sticking to it. We are ready to flip this over, but carefully. This is not strong yet. It will not be at full strength until the glue dries. We are going to do the same thing on the other side. One important difference for this side is that we are going to build a little tension into the frame. I put extra glue on there and I smeared it around. That seemed to work just fine in terms of getting a faster technique. Now watch what I do here. I'm going to force the two pieces of wood together by turning the 59 inch piece in towards the center of the frame. You see that? One more time in slow motion. I force together this joint before stapling it. That's holding those two pieces of wood together and providing a lot of strength now in this frame. There is a tension built in there that's going to dry into the glue. Plenty of staples. These act as clamps, holding the two surfaces together wherever you staple. And finally, glue over the top. I can't stress enough, this is what makes this design work. The glue on both sides of the corrugated cardboard is what makes this so strong. If your stapler isn't strong enough, just lightly hammer down the heads. This frame needs to dry. I suggest overnight, but in the hot sun, it could be a matter of a couple of hours. When dry, remove the paper. It's not going to come off the triangle itself. Now watch as I test the strength. I'm pushing down on the corner. This is a great way to break this. Check this out. I mean, it's really just surprisingly strong. I mean, that should break it right there. That really should. And this would definitely break a weak joint right there. Less than one fifth of the volume of this frame is holding way more than four fifths of its weight under stress. Part three, steel track braces, AKA Johnny's. All right, these are the steel track braces and we are looking at three finished pieces. We are going to make one of them together now. These holes are for mounting to the bottom of the panels or taping down the braces to counters if you are doing an elevated panel. And these holes are for mounting to the panel sides and joining two panels together. I'm using track so that you can still add studs if need be. You can easily make the height taller or the base longer with the studs because they will fit right in there and you can just screw them in. I'm cutting this first piece at 33 inches. You cut these by first cutting down the sides and then bend it to get your snips in there and then down that center part. This is the 33 inch base piece right here. I'm marking one inch back and putting an angle. It's easy to get confused, so I suggest working with a Sharpie in this way. Then we're going to bend it down.
Now we hammer it flat, nice and flat. We need to drill two mounting holes in the front. I'm putting down a piece of plywood to protect my drill bit. It's these two holes here that we're making right now. Now we're going to cut a 15 inch piece. Again, you first cut the sides as close to parallel as possible, no biggie. Like the frames, these are designed to absorb error. Okay, we want to mount this an inch from the edge. You put this in sideways, then spin it nearly in place. You will see me do that again later. This needs to be more or less level when you do this, but don't worry too much. It's going to move around a lot as we work, and we are going to set the angle of it properly in a little bit. These are all self-tapping screws. This one has a larger head, best for drywall applications. This has a smaller but thick head. Both are self-tapping. And this one is my favorite for this application. It's just really sharp and works great. I'm going to use all of them in this video just to show you that they all work. I've used the vice grips here because otherwise the metal is too flexible. You need to clamp or hold them together to pierce through them both. There's just too much flex at the end of that track there. You can do that with a pair of channel locks. You can also do it with your hand if necessary especially if you're using the sharp black piercing screws. With the next piece, I will be able to demonstrate this flex issue much better. All right. So we're going to cut the angle support 13 inches long. I put angles on my pieces like that, again, just to keep track. When you're working really fast, that kind of stuff gets lost in the mix. So you see here, I'm putting the piece in sideways and bending it into position. I have been putting my braces at a five degree angle, a small, tiny angle just to keep the weight towards the back. Okay, now I'm going to show you this flex issue. You see the track on the outside edge? It has flexibility. You don't want to drill there. You want to drill where the track is solid. That gives you the resistance you need to go through both pieces. If I drilled on the other edge that I pressed with my hand there, it would just send the bottom track out of the way as it came through the first piece, rather than piercing them both. If this doesn't quite make sense, it will when you get to work, so you can look forward to that. I should have done this earlier, but didn't, so here we go. I'm going to put the two holes in the top of the vertical part of this brace. And there you go. This is a super strong and very versatile brace. I made three of them in like, I don't know, 35 minutes. Now I'm gonna show you how to mount to these. I'm not actually screwing in the panel from the bottom because I'm alone and it's annoying to do, but normally you would. You can see here it is halfway over the brace. So I'm just using one side of this brace to screw into the panel at the top and the bottom. Okay, let's get the second piece on now. It's able to stand like that in part because of the five degree angle. You can also see there's something up. The frames are not square or the table. We are not building a spaceship and when installed, these panels will look and work great. Okay. So both are screwed together here, and now let's go install them in a deli. Part four, installation. We are going to take that 59 inch panel and another 62 inch panel that I made using my technique with the Baltic ply triangles. 
So I'm going to load up. I asked them to close the door and put a sign outside pointing customers to the swivel window installed in the exterior. The first thing I do is clear the counter. That thing was very much in the way, so I pushed it back with the help of the gentleman working there. He held it in place while I screwed it into that side panel. It's firm, it's very solid. This is the 62 inch panel made in the typical way. I really don't believe there is any difference between the cardboard joints and these Baltic ply joints. It's just that for me and my shop, it's faster for me to do these Baltic ply joints with my pneumatic stapler. I'm going to put this in with just two L brackets. I was planning on doing four, but it felt really tight and firm, so I called it a day at just two. Always try to find the simplest solution possible. I'm using those boxes of soda as the spacers. They are setting the height. Now let's move on to the 59 inch cardboard joint panel getting installed at the deli counter. This is the piece we made together in the shop. I'm just inspecting the counter, kind of making a plan. This is my first time installing on site with these Johnny braces and it looks like we are going to have to use these backwards. You'll see, I pause a lot to figure out what I'm up to. So that's how you would normally use the brace, but because the countertop is so narrow, and I want this at the back of the counter, I have to put them in backwards and you'll see how that works. It's totally fine. Then I also realized there's an issue because I need to be right over this glass hardware. I didn't have a tape measure on me and I was in a rush, so I didn't go back to my car to grab it. What I ended up doing was using my blade as a measurement. So I placed it as a spacer from the bottom of the angled piece there on the bracket to the end of the glass. Then I accounted by eye for the distance I need to get past that hardware and put a mark on the piece. For this one, I again used the blade to match the distance of the barrier braces to the edge of the counter by measuring with my blade. This time I can mark the brace right at the glass because there's no hardware there to account for. By using the blade as a spacer in this way, the panel will be at the same measurement on the counter even though the bases are at different lengths to account for the hardware on the right side. I've got to cut about four inches ahead of my marks. My point here is that you can use anything as a measuring tool. I often use my body to take measurements in stores. A panel could be described as a shoulder to fingertips plus forearm to end of fist with a door at open hand from the left. Now I'm going to cut them at those marks. I first bend, then bang it flat. I actually started hammering too hard, but went softer. I didn't want to damage the tile below the carpet. Now that flap gets folded back. I definitely should have had gloves. I just didn't bring them. I forgot. Okay, now see, I'm flipping it, so it's making an L bracket at the end of this brace. I'll do it again, speed it up. soda can spacers, and the gentleman behind the counter to help me keep this up. Both of these braces are just taped down. So they are taped in the front, I'll show you a shot of that in a sec. That's the right side. I taped over all that bent metal and stuff. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it works. Again, there's always more complicated and more 
beautiful, better ways of doing things. I'm just trying to show you the fastest and most functional. Okay, then I'm taping the tabs in the front or whatever, because now they are actually the back of these braces. These tabs right here. I'm screwing it in through the holes that we put there in the shop, just one of them. Then I need a sharp fine thread drywall screw. I brought some in my pocket, kind of like the little black screws used to assemble the braces, but these ones are a half inch long. It just goes right through the metal and into the wood. Self tappers could work as well, but because they drill away the metal, they also drill away the wood and are not ideal for this application. They would work though. Putting my things away. So this is my first time using the hair dryer. I have to say it isn't as good as the heat gun or I haven't mastered it yet. When you're using a heat gun or hair dryer, try to remember both get hotter as you use them. So what keeps happening to me is that after about two minutes, they get to full temperature and all of a sudden I have been working the tool too close to the plastic and melt through. This happens to me a lot. Hopefully you're not as rushed as I tend to be and you don't put holes in your panels, but you know, just put tape on it. It's no biggie. So yeah, here you can see it's quite strong. I guess it's hard to show in the video, but I was super happy with the strength of this. It's very solid. Dust it off. Celebrate a little bit with your buds. This guy coming up didn't have a mask on, so I didn't want to keep him on camera too long. And I believe that is it for the hand tools addendum. If this stuff is all new to you, I suggest you now watch the mounting addendum for a deep dive into mounting via the mounts we make, some tricks of the trade, and several case studies. Thanks for watching.